Okay, so this is the 11th and final episode of Logisim Tutorials. This is not really a tutorial, but an example of what I've made. This is, I'd like to say a CPU, which I named Rumble. Rumble. And it has quite a few features in the way that it turns 4 bit numbers into 7 bit ASCII. It has many different outputs, like um, hexadecimal output of ASCII. It has a 5 bit output of ASCII. No, this is also a 5 bit ASCII output. This, is, this one's also a 5 bit output. This is a probe, which is quite a useful item that you may want to use to output a decimal or something else to display. And it all bases around the ROM. So, uh, I've got the clocks turned off at the moment, but now if I turn the clocks on, it can write a message. So, for instance, it will write my name. Let's turn the clocks off, reset, that. Reset the button that goes to the top, and clear. So, this is. A com this is I made this, so what we could change it. Uh, you can click to edit, and this is. This is the hex editor, as you've seen before when we're doing the RAM and ROM. So if we just change it all to zero, and I'll be back in a sec when I finished writing out a quick little message. So I finally filled in a secret message, and now when we enable clock again. When we enable clocks again, hello, you may know what the references is there. So stop clocks, and as you see in this ROM, it has quite a few numbers. So I'll go through them all. So the first of all, I need to explain how my or machine code works. So first it takes in a zero, which is the operation. So operation number zero, and the two parameters are 44, uh, no, 4 and 4. So it's add 4 and 4, which is 8. And H, which is the first letter, is the first letter in the alphabet, is the eighth letter in the alphabet. So 4, 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, and that's what it prints. So when you get to that number, it will print it as a screen as output. So this one is the next, and is another operation, which is subtract. So the next set is E, and it says, let's subtract 6 minus 1, which, as you may know, is 5. So it does some more adding. Also remember, this is hexadecimal, so when we're doing W, it's B plus C, which is the number. Also, we will notice that there's a 2 here. This 2 over here is uh, is the multiplier operation. So when we're doing uh, O for the world in the O, uh, it's times in 3 times 5, which is 15. So it's printing O because O is the 15th letter. So that's how the ROM works for the program. Now I'll show you what it actually so these things you may have noticed when I was doing that also were uh, spitting out characters as well. This button's to clear the screen, this button's to reset. So we have to make uh, the maximum value to be pretty much the last the last character of this so it doesn't go too far and start printing out null characters. Not null characters, but because if we just left it going forever, it'd just keep doing that annoying symbol that I don't even know what the use is for which looks uh, so that is the, is the one on an English keyboard at least that's just under escape and is a little commery dash sort of thing which doesn't look like anything which is very annoying so that's what it'll carry on printing out because that's zero zero that's kind of what it that's what it prints out because of what I've done because this is just four bit adding to get to a seven bit output so first of all let's look in the CPU the CPU is um, this is the CPU. So in the CPU, 
it has quite a lot of stuff that doesn't really do anything at the moment because I've been experimenting with the design. So it's not really working at the moment. So what we have here is our address, which is the number that's uh, the input, the, the, the address number from the, the counter. So the address first goes in here, and this is the checker. Let's look inside the checker. The checker, what it does is it divides the address by 4, so we know if it's the, the 0, 0, which, and then we get the remainder, so 0, 0, which means we're on the first of the 4, the block of 4, 0, well not the zeros, but block of, the block of 4. So if it's 0, 0, we know we are on the first uh, number of the block, 0, 1, we're on the second, 0, 2, Remainder means we're on the third, and zero three means we're on the fourth. So that's to decide which character we're on. So going back to the CPU, this will store the number into a register, of uh, th then it will allow it will have a clock trigger to allow the number, which is going to all of the data registers, and the number is basically what's in what. The uh, the number is what uh, at the what's at the address. So if the address allows it, so if it's divided by four and then the remainder zero, so it allow in here. So this will be the where the this is where the um, data is stored. So where all the it's where all of the data is stored. Uh, for if it's uh, this is where the data is stored. I can't say sentences. This is where the data is stored when uh, it is an operation, and then the data is stored for uh, uh, zero zero. Uh, this one here is when it is the first operand, as they're called. This one is for the second operand, and this one is for the useless operand, which just signs it off pretty much. But I've been trying to use it for register stuff. Oh, doesn't do anything. This is the decoder, the decimal decoder. I think that's what it's called. Um, yes, just called a decoder. Just says decoder, just to confuse me. So the decoder base. It's pretty much. The, it's pretty much uh, similar to the uh, multiplexer, although uh, this is the, the select bit is the same as not it just shows if the select bit is on or off if if so basically it tests the select bit to if it's on or off and moving on this tells us um, here's another register so the output is in the register so it doesn't lose it and it doesn't just flip on the screen it remembers what it's just done so you may see something with to do with B and Q. That is in the doer, because I don't know. That's just because I record it. So to the right of uh, written what all of the different things do. So add sub mul comp rand in small letters, so it's easier. So this is a random number. So it doesn't really. This one doesn't really care what the operands are. If you if this is on, it will pick a random number, and that's what it will print. So print anything if you use the rand operation which is it starts at zero so zero one two three four that's the fourth operation and the third operation is comparison so when it's on it'll compare and check depending on the bit it'll choose which uh, which is true Although it can be a bit confusing because it may just print out a random thing, but it doesn't matter. It's not really in a finished state. It just left it for a while. And here's the multiplication. So it will just add. I should change that because that's not really an optimum state. Just made out into an input there. But I made this quite a while ago and I didn't do that then. This is the subtract. This also has. Um, uh, minus output, which you actually saw, if you might have noticed on the, because that had a red line, kind of, sticking out like a sore thumb, 
on the end of the CPU. This is to make sure it's minus, and this is the addition, the addition here. So this is the doer. This gets the operation and pretty much does the operation with if this input is on, which comes from that decoder you saw. And the uh, register office is something in work test is just I wanted to test things because I was bored one day. And this is pretty much the entire CPU. All it it can pretty much print any number. So let's just uh, try it with the um, let's see if the random number does anything. I haven't actually tested this for a while. So if we just it's easy, quite easy to clear all of them. It's just press right up the arrow keys and zero frantically, and it pretty much will clear everything. So we'll use operand four, and that's it. So we'll clear that, and we'll make the maximum value change that to um, five. Leave it like that. Okay, so clock triggers on. I don't know that, that was completely random. Nope. Well, I haven't done that yet, I suppose. But this is all for this ep This is all for the last episode of Logisim tutorial, demonstrating my CPU, which isn't very good at all. There's many other people that have made amazing CPUs, but I haven't. So this is all, and goodbye.